Hello everyone, my name is Leonie, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna have a little discussion video about the not like other girls phenomenon and how it appears in young adult books specifically. So many of you know that I really love young adult books, especially when I was younger and I was a teenager, I would devour them. <laughs> like they really made me fall in love with reading. But also around that time, like you know, the early 2010s when YA kind of came up, there was also a general trend among a lot of girls, especially girls on the internet, to see themselves as not like other girls. I'm different. I'm not like the other girly girls. And I was definitely one of those people, unfortunately. Especially on the internet, there were many, many little pictures and comics and memes about this phenomenon with very clear indicator that other girls were bad. And if you were not like other girls, that was good. You know, other girls wear makeup. But I read books. <laughs> this very popular picture, which was basically just if you read books, then you will also start wearing different clothes and you become a brunette. <laughs> And at the beginning of the 21st century, around this time, young adult books also became super popular with books like Twilight, Looking for Alaska, and The Hunger Games. And these books mostly reined in a young teenage girl audience. So given that many of these young girls thought that they were not like other girls, of course, that's gonna be seen reflected in the main characters of these young adult books, who usually also really fit the not like other girls trope. And lately a lot of girls have been looking back on that time, on the whole not like other girls phenomenon and talking about how maybe that wasn't really that good. There are many many videos on the internet about the not like other girls phenomenon, but today I just wanted to add to that by specifically looking at young adult books and why I think that the not like other girls trope is very specifically appearing in young adult books and what it tells us about why the trope was so popular. I have theories. I'm editing and I just want to clarify that I'm specifically talking about early YA books, so the ones that were popular around the 2010s, because that's when the not like other girls trope meme thing was also popular. I relate so much to this main character. She's not like other girls. She doesn't like fashion or boys. She'd rather be at home than be at a party. <laughs> so me. I can't wait to finish the story that will eventually end in her becoming beautiful and getting with the guy. And let's first start with a short explanation of the not like other girls trope just to make sure we're all on the same page. There are other videos on the internet that dive way deeper into this, but I just want to make sure, you know, we all know what we're talking about. And what better way to talk about a phenomenon on the internet than with memes from the times. Ugh, why can't you be normal? Hmm, why can't you be interesting? Other girls, fake boobs, orange makeup, Facebook, skinny, trashy, me, real boobs, white, natural, tumbler, just right, nerdy. And this is from a blog with the caption, when a writer sets their heroine up as a really strong female character by denigrating other, often more traditionally feminine female characters. So what is the other girl? that we are seeing in all these comics. First of all, she's usually more traditionally feminine and white. And second of all, she likes makeup, boys, boy bands, fashion, and by extension, she is seen as trashy, shallow, a slut, generally just not good. The general gist of these kind of comics is that femininity is not valued. But of course the question is why? Why do girls feel the need to call themselves not like other girls? I think the answer is twofold. The first one is the one that's mostly talked about and that is of course internalized misogyny. If you grow up in a world where femininity is often vilified and associated with bad personality traits, then you're gonna want to distance yourself from that and say that you're definitely not like that at all. And if you're already kind of an outcast, person, then it's even easier to put more distance between yourself and the popular girls. But what I also think plays a role is that it's kind of like a very mini baby version of rebellion, where girls just kind of start distancing themselves from what is expected of them 
as girls. I can give you an example of when I was like 13 years old, I really didn't like makeup and fashion, which I know look at me now but <laughs> one of the reasons that i didn't like those things is definitely because of just internalized misogyny you know i thought it was shallow and stupid but also because i felt like it was kind of forced onto me i, I felt like because i was a girl i kind of had to be into makeup and i had to be into fashion but i just wasn't and it made me very annoyed that i felt like it was kind of forced upon me so i think there's definitely a lot of frustrations with these n-logs which is just shorthand for not like other girls because you can look at all these other girls that are really putting effort into their makeup and their fashion and it can make you think should i be doing that like should I also be doing these things if I want to be more popular? Maybe I don't even want that. And as a teenager, you're not, or at least I wasn't aware of like societal standards. So you just angle your frustration at the girls who do the thing. Again, if you want to go into this a little bit more deeply, I will link in the description some videos on the topic. But now let's look at how we see this in YA books. So a very common talking point of these not like other girls girls was they were different because they liked reading. And books that were very popular with this audience were young adult books. So the question is, how do we see the not like other girls trope reflected in young adult books in the early 2010s? Spoiler alert, it's a lot. Let's just give a little history lesson <laughs> of uh, the YA genre and how it uh, evolved. To me, this whole thing with the not like other girls all started with paranormal romance. It was the time of Twilight and every single Twilight copy that came after that. We have a main character who is an outcast. She's different, she's kind of nerdy, but she falls in love with like a mysterious brooding boy who is definitely a vampire or a werewolf, maybe a zombie, but probably something sexier than that. <laughs> and she's also an outcast. She's clumsy. She's just a little, a little quirky. But despite her being a little bit different than her feminine friends, her life still revolves around this one dude. And her whole story is still like completely revolving around the romance, which is something that N-Logs definitely don't like. So personally, I think the real shift to like the not like other girl main characters came after this. Because what you need to know about the YA genre is that there was kind of like a shift in demand. People started criticizing all these paranormal romance books where the main characters were just damsels in distresses all the time. That's in combination with more action focused stories like dystopians and urban fantasies. People wanted more strong female characters. Let's talk about the strong female character for a second. So this started out a super valid criticism of stories, YA stories with main characters that were complete damsels in distresses with no agency that only cared about boys. So it's great to want stories that are different than that. The problem is that in these new main characters, their strength was often defined by their lack of femininity. And anything else that was feminine, any other girl that would really care about boys would be at risk of being called a damsel in distress character and not good. And all these new strong female characters were the exact same. Like they were all snarky, good fighters and emotionally unavailable. Hmm, how am I gonna write a strong female character? Should I write a well-developed character with layers and depths? <laughs> no. I'm gonna give her traditionally masculine traits. That's a strong female character, right? And by giving our main characters more traditionally masculine traits, she stood in even more contrast with her usually more feminine rival counterpart. So here's kind of how I would summarize like the two main archetype of female characters that you see in these YA books. First, you have the main character. She is plain, normal, unpopular, and devoid of any feminine traits both physically and mentally like she doesn't like shopping or makeup but she also usually has a very boyish body type and is very flat chested and then often but not always there is a 
female girly counterpart or rival that is way more girly, way more into fashion, tall, pretty, hourglass figure, gets a lot of attention from boys and is usually a lot more sexual. Examples of this are Alina and Zoya in the Grisha trilogy, Clary and Isabel in the Mortal Instruments, Mare and Evangeline in Red Queen, Jude and Nikesha in the Cruel Prince trilogy, and also I would say Katniss, even though she doesn't have a specific female rival counterpart, I do think she's not like other girls because she's very just like not feminine and she also says the following. Other girls our age, I've heard them talk about boys or other girls or clothes. Madge and I aren't gossipy and clothes bore me to tears. There I have it. So although I do think that some of these characters are well written or even um, developed to be kind of growing out of these stereotypes um, and a lot of these also don't actively denounce femininity, it does say something that like there's this specific brand of non-feminine strong female main character that you see in all of the popular YA books at the time and since most readers read like all of these popular books, I do think that definitely sends a message to the reader. So what are the implications of this? If you want to be a strong female character, which there was a really big need for, then you can't really have any traditionally feminine traits. Which of course implicitly suggests that if you are feminine or more traditionally feminine, then you can't be a strong or intelligent character. Or at least definitely not the hero of the story. But of course, although the main character's life doesn't revolve around the love interest anymore, there's definitely still a lot of focus on beauty in these YA books and there will always be a love interest and the main character will always end up getting a boyfriend. So now that we've looked at some examples, I think the big question that we all have is why? If there was such a big need for more strong female characters because we didn't like these girls whose life, you know, only revolved around boys and we wanted something more feminist, then why didn't every book just get rid of always needing to have a love interest or all this focus on beauty all the time. Why did it just end up in hating on girls? And most of, like pretty much all of these books were written by women, so we also can't say that this is just men writing their manic pixie dream girl ideas <laughs> onto four teenage girls. These are written by women, so these are women talking about their experience and usually because YA in that time especially was more kind of like wishful thinking, self-insert for the reader. These were just women writing kind of their own fantasies. So why? Why is the not like other girls trope so appealing in a fictional setting? To answer that question, I think we need to look at kind of what it's like being a teenager, a girl teenager, what kind of the female experience is as a teenager. Think about what not like other girls say when they're talking about other girls. Oh, they're so vain, they're so shallow, they only care about makeup and looks, they only care about getting attention from guys, and oh, I'm just kind of naming everything that women are expected and encouraged to do. Guys? We live in a society. <laughs> we do, though. <laughs> we live in a society. <laughs> where if you do what is expected of you as a woman, you will be shunned for doing exactly that. And I think a lot of teenage girls for the first time start experiencing this femininity contradiction. I'll just call it the femininity contradiction from now on. I'm sure there's like a more academic term for this, I don't know. Um, but basically, femininity is inferior, but also expected of you if you want to be happy. Little side note, when I'm talking about like femininity, I'm talking about like what is seen in society nowadays as traditionally feminine, you know, like wearing pink, being shallow, being really into beauty. But it's important for us to understand that this is of course a very 
cis straight white centered idea like for example all girls do is care about boys is very heteronormative and that's not even to speak about the relationship that trans girls have to their own femininity also what has been perceived as the pinnacle of femininity has always been the white woman whereas historically black women were usually not even seen as real women in western countries so it's important to understand that when we're talking about femininity in the context of being not like other girls, that experience is of course very different for different women. So back to the femininity contradiction, you know, femininity is inferior but also kind of expected of you. I think a lot of teenage girls start noticing that for the first time, like when they become a teenager. Example number one is that boys kind of start making fun of girls for wearing makeup, that it's like fake and unnatural, but at the same time you will be just surrounded by advertisement all the time telling you to wear makeup so you can feel more beautiful. Also, teenage girls are often kind of like stereotyped as being shallow and ditzy and just generally having undesirable traits. And But you yourself maybe consider yourself just not shallow at all and maybe kind of smart. But you also notice that you are kind of the outcast type, whereas the girls that act more ditzy and shallow tend to become popular. So what's going on with that? So teenage girls kind of start to realize that femininity is seen as a bad thing, but by rejecting femininity, they will also never achieve the power and popularity that these other girls have. Like either you just are a very girly girl and will probably be made fun of and ridiculed for being so girly, but you know, you'll probably maybe get more attention and be more popular, or you reject the femininity and can feel cool about that, but you'll probably get less attention from guys and maybe you'll feel more insecure about the way you look, etc. It's just you can't really win, or at least. Not in real life, you can't. In the world of fiction, everything is possible. <laughs> Enter the YA book. You can have your self-insert main character that can hate on other girls for being girly and pretty while at the same time achieving exactly what society still tells you you should want to achieve. You know, beauty and being the special chosen one and getting a boyfriend. What a great message to send to teenage girls. <laughs> so I've identified three ways in which you can see this happening in YA books. So let's dive into them. The first one is the rival mean girl. Like I said before, usually there's kind of like a, a girl, mean girl character that we're supposed to hate. That's like the nemesis of the main character. But I feel like this other girl is not just a representation of stupid girly things. She's also a representation of all the standards that the main character can't meet. And we see this in the fact that, you know, the girly girl, mean girl is not just a character we're supposed to hate. She's like actively a rival to the main character. Like usually they're both rivaling over the same love interest, for example. And to me that does show an awareness that although we hate everything the Mean Girl stands for, we are aware that everything she has is kind of desired by society and probably the love interest might like that and therefore she poses a threat to the main character. So it's not just hating on girly things. There's also the awareness that maybe if we were like her, our life would be easier. So when the outcasted main character looks at the other girl, she stands face to face with everything that she might want to have, like beauty and fashion and attention from guys. But she also stands face to face with all the things she might not want to do in order to get there, like wear makeup or play dumb or wear clothes that you might not be comfortable wearing. The second thing is male approval. I remember from my teenage time that kind of the amount of like attention or approval you got from guys like romantically was like pretty like synonymous to how good you felt about yourself and if no one was like romantically interested in you that just kind of made you feel like you were just a piece of trash gonna be alone forever, you know? A lot of the self-worth of teenage girls is in whether boys like them or not. And I will say that I do think that maybe this is not just 
a girl thing like I think this is just a general teenager experience that a lot of your self-worth just comes from whether someone of the gender you're attracted to is also attracted to you but I do know that for example sapphic girls experience that the attention that they get from men is just valued way more than the attention that they get from women. And we also see that if men seek out a lot of attention from girls, that is seen as cool. But if girls seek out a lot of attention from guys, they are seen as slutty. Because, you know, women are encouraged to have attention from men, but if you actively pursue that, then that is seen as a bad thing. You may think, how how do we see this in young adult books? I thought we decided that um, we didn't like main characters who wanted attention from guys. That is correct. So we just got a bunch of main characters who really weren't interested in guys, who would not respond to any advances of any dudes. I feel like this is also where a lot of like hate to love came up, the hate to love romance trope, where the main character would like just not be interested and just not like, you know, she was not interested in boys or romance. But of course, eventually she would get the guy. <laughs> like there would even be love triangles. So she says she doesn't need a man to make her happy. She doesn't want a boyfriend, but she does end up getting one. And I think this sends like a really weird message to the reader. It's like you're telling someone that's like, smoking is bad, you should never smoke. Also, by the way, here's a cigarette because I know you like it. <laughs> I recently read an article by Asia Monet where she also talked about this, so I'm just gonna share some quotes from that article because I think I cannot say it better than she did. I will also link it below. Femininity is the mark of vanity of popular mean girls. It rebukes readers for the very thing it serves them. Stories where girls are whisked away to marry princes and become princesses and are gifted powers beyond their imagination only happen to the girls who do not want it. If you want it, which obviously you do because you spend the money on the book to read it, you're not like her. She doesn't want a boyfriend, she just gets one. Wanting boyfriends is side character material. So yet again, we see a contradiction here, you know, wanting a boyfriend is definitely a bad thing, but also we're gonna give it to you because we know that's what you want and you should want that. And the third thing is beauty. So beauty standards affect everyone, but especially women are told that their value comes from how aesthetically pleasing they are. I think you can especially see this in the difference between teen boy romance movies and teen girl romance movies. Like if you have a movie with kind of like a nerdy main character who is a boy and who falls in love with like this beautiful girl, eventually she'll end up kind of like liking him anyway without him having to change everything. Whereas in a lot of girl movies, you'll see this like nerdy main character who falls in love with like this super hot dude. Somewhere towards the end, she will get a makeover where she will suddenly become gorgeous. And that's the moment that the love interest suddenly sees how beautiful she was all along and that actually he's been in love with her all this time. It's very clear that these girls are taught that their value lies in their beauty. And if someone's not paying attention to them, instead of accepting them for who they are, they should become beautiful and that's when people will accept you for who you are. But of course, if a woman actually actively tries to be more beautiful by wearing makeup, for example, or doing things with fashion, that is seen as shallow because you're expected to be beautiful, just naturally. You're not allowed to try. I also just realized that it's always other characters doing this to the main character. Like the main character never initiates this or asks for this, because of course asking for something like that would make you shallow. Of course, we also see this in YA books. The main character is usually not into fashion, not into makeup, but there's always like very specific the bath scene where the main character like gets to the castle or the palace or whatever and they have this luxurious bath <laughs> where they get scrubbed clean or like there's like a team of servants or people at the capital that like make them pretty and like shave them and like scrub them clean and usually they will also be given some makeup get a little bit of a makeover get a beautiful dress to wear and the main character is almost always like hating on it and talking about how she doesn't care about this and that she never cared about these things and that it's just stupid and shallow but it's clearly presented as a scene to be enjoyed 
by the reader so again there's this like weird contradicting message so in conclusion i think that is why the not like other girls phenomenon is so popular among teen girls it basically serves girls something that they can never achieve in real life and that is both hating on femininity you know giving into your internalized misogyny but also still achieving the things that you usually will only achieve if you give in to your femininity which of course is not a good thing because it only perpetuates these ideas further and we may wonder how is this now like has this changed like, i still don't really know a lot of very popular ya books but the main character it just is girly like it's not never really goes that far but the not like other girls vibe is definitely going away and i feel like especially if you read ya books that have lgbt main characters or main characters of color they don't really play into these stereotypes as much so i'll put on the screen some recommendations i'm also not trying to say that it's like bad to enjoy any of these um uh, all any of the books that i mentioned <laughs> because i enjoyed them a lot and i'm gonna say like a lot of them i still enjoy and like makeover scenes in books really are my guilty pleasure like i love them every time i'm just making this video because i think it's interesting to just kind of reflect on where that comes from and what it means and now what did we learn from this because i find it fun to look for some kind of message in everything i think what we can learn from this is that if we don't watch out genuine like critique of anti-feminist behavior can very easily just turn into straight up misogyny like what started out as really good genuine critique of all these main characters whose lives only revolved around boys just quickly turned into a distancing from anything that is feminine and calling any girl or a main character who was interested in boys just shallow and stupid okay and that is everything that i had to say on the not like other girls trope in young adult books let me know what you thought i'm really wondering if you guys like videos like this i don't usually do these kind of long form discussion videos but i had a lot of fun so if you have like more ideas or topics that you would like me to cover or just if you would like me to make more of these kind of videos let me know down below and give it a like if you liked it again check out all the links that i put in the description of all the things that i mentioned throughout this video i really hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you soon in another one goodbye mm, there's a ambulance Wait for the ambulance. R revolves around. It's snowing. This is very distracting. Why is it snowing? It's April. Okay. <laughs>